All right, all right, he's on a roll. Once he hits the go live button, there's no turning back. Honus Tribe. Let me get right to it today. We have a little bit to cover. And um, I just wanted to jump on Facebook today. I actually was going to try to go to YouTube Live, and it was making it too complex for me. I wanted to have a really uh, intricate conversation about critical thinking and finance and how to really determine what's going to happen based on multiple things. You obviously have your intuition, you have raw data, you have facts, and how to go get very proficient at gathering those facts to know what's going on. That way you're not following the herd. Uh, it's clear, you know, somehow some ice spray, some haterade in the air, probably those chemtrails, and it's just like people can't do anything else but continuously tear each other down. And I'm actually talking in this case to me about me personally, because uh, I'm still going to keep smashing. I'm through that. But I'm just noticing how just other people are always coming to me. Hey, what about this person? Or what about th what this person said? And it's just the same thing over and over again. So you grow tired of that, right? But you could see exactly why, you know, uh, it's so difficult to expand as a as a collective. And it's just because you, you got people basically want to make everyone do what they, they feel is the best thing to do. And we all do that in some way, shape, or form, right? And that's actually another conversation. I got a conversation for tomorrow that's just directly in relation to my recent recording about how to get rid of possession. And, uh, but that's actually not what today's conversation is about. We'll probably save that for maybe tomorrow if I can get in here again, uh, seeing that this is rather consistent. My conversation today is actually about the future of finance and where things are going, why it's a no-brainer, and uh, why you still have just so much confusion going on out there with people just saying one thing or saying another and confusing each other, getting each other scared. And it's just a mess, man. Like, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, man, you know, because I'm still, I'm 38. So in retrospect, I'm still seeing a lot of what the world has to offer for the first time. Like, many of us act like we just have seen it all and done it all, you know, and just because you've been to the club or bought a few, rented a few cars or something. But, uh... The truth is, is that we we're basically really ignorant here in in program in many tenses, and it's like AA. You know, once you admit that that you know that the knowledge, the master knowledge, you know, the the keys to the whole thing, you know, the the manual to your vehicle, your own body, you know, you may not be in complete possession of. Then you gotta realize, man, you've been walking around here like you know thinking that you really got something going on, of course, because the ego is like, well, you know, we'll take what we get. <laughs> we take what we got and we'll just grow with that, fake it till you make it. But meanwhile, you know, the being's crying inside because it's like, man, there's no, there, where's the opening here? You know what? You know, I know this could be better. Why is it not happening? So it's not happening because you're here to make it happen. You're here to make it happen for yourself. And you're, you can also then take the, the extra credit, the side mission, if you may, and see if you can make it happen for others. And I would uh, really advise you to do it exactly in that, in that order. So here we go. So what I wanted to talk about, actually, again, as I said, is the future of finance and some of the things that you see going on in the cryptocurrency world that you know, why everybody's watching the coins and why everybody's watching how the money is going up and some people are getting paid for the first time and then some people are still scared trying to figure out if they're going to jump in or not. And, you know, you just got, you know, a, a, an array of people and there's a reason why. And I'm going to show you why there would be, you know, all these opinions about what's going to happen, you know, is it, you know, what, what stage is it going to reach? How's it really going to work? And so I'm going to do a share screen here because I got my switcher hooked up today. And, um, well, it looks like my picture is kind of blocking things out a little bit, but what you'll see here is, you know, all you need to pay attention to is the first part, really. That's all we need to talk about is about every time something starts, what is the same process? And, you know, if you're, if you have to write up some hard work on things, you have to prove some facts and, you know, you can put it all together nice for your professor. You know, you're going to have to start using charts like this and you say, based on Roger's diffusion of innovation, Bell, I know that we're... And then they may stamp you with the, the B or whatever, depending on what the book says about whether you're supposed to go to the next level or not in those universities. But anyway, what I'm saying is, is that you need to use some kind of measure to determine where are things at, when is it going to crest, when is the next thing going to hit again, because it is like waves. Just like the energy can be read through the Fibonacci sequence on the charts, so too sound and 
pretty much everything here obeys this shape and, uh, and many things obey this process. And so let's say first we have the innervators, right? We all know about those. That's generally everybody on this line, you know, at this rate and listening to this versus maybe, uh, I don't know, Cardi B and Bruno Mars. I don't know. Listening to this rather than maybe that. You know, that's the innovator. That's someone who's saying, looking future forward and saying, hey, but, you know, where are things going to go, though? I know people won't be able to see that now because it's like a wall in front of them. But we need to have that that eye of, of uh, what did it say, the eye of Heru, you know, just like that. It's really the tip of the beak. You know, a lot of people, they, they keep misinterpreting the ancient scriptures. But there's a specific geometry to the tip of a beak of a hawk and an eagle that gives them the ability of aerodynamics that they have and the type of vision and, and, and aim and all that stuff, right? Because they use, they're using all that to, to govern everything. And they even have the magnetic system inside of their head to, to govern their, uh, you, know, their, um, you know, their travel, right? So having that vision is all about being able to know where things are, know where they're going to go, and know how that's going to affect you, and to be able to benefit from the wave. It's like a surfer setting themselves up for the wave. You know, you don't want to let the wave crash on top of you, because at any point, if you're not positioning yourself properly, it could be uncomfortable if you're right in the middle of where there's a major transition taking place. And, you know, while I won't scream epic saga and world destruction, like, in retrospect, what people thought 2012 would be, like, just from the world change level and the pole shift level, is 2018. You know, we had to figure out our calendars, but you could actually get it, feel it in your body. Like, there's been an overwhelming amount of energy for these last three days in, you know, building after the sun came out of the, you know, the, what they say is the lowest point, but that seemed to happen earlier. It's not, like, these, these calendars are off. They're, like, on some kind of weird lag. So you'd be like, oh, that was the 23rd. It was Christmas when Christmas came, like, five days earlier. You could tell by the chill. You could tell by different things in your body of when you, your solar system goes into its lower state and then starts the rising process. And this time, when it started the rising process, I really felt, you know, personally and, and feel now very electric, much more electric than than uh, the normal. So that lets me know that we're getting to the polar aspects where the poles are actually joining because when the poles join, it's just like what you would see with a pole in a hole. It, they come together and it creates, it, it brings the energy of creation. Now, of course, you know, one could waste all that energy on creation, I don't know, on some porn side. Like the energy of creation is basically our orgasmic flow. Uh, or you could, you know, spill it off into some painting. You could, you know, create your, your business and your idea with it. That's all what the creative force is. You know, you know, it's a birds and bees conversation for real. So with that creative force heightening, obviously there's a lot of things for people to divest them, or, or invest themselves in that it just may be completely steering them in the wrong direction. And what I mean by that is like the media is doing so much distraction and saying so little about the big moves that are going on. They'll throw it here and there just to say that, just to let you know that they're aware of it, just so they can keep that trending aspect of who they are. But in retrospect, why all these rappers and things are singing about all this BS, and, and country singers too, all of them, singing about bullshit, basically. Not, none of them get up on the mic and say, hey, look, I'm telling you right now, humanity has got a massive redistribution of not only income, but it changed the entire world. Get your stuff together. Now back to you, John. Why? I mean, because that's betrayal. You see what I mean? That's where betrayal truly comes in. It's like you do it to your own kind. Some of these people know what's going on, know where you can get in, but so selfish and stingy and decrepit and, and, and just dealing with scarcity. But remember, we're abundant, so it's for us to continue to spread our abundance. There's no limit to this. Like, some, you got some people even crabbing over cryptocurrency right now, like, there's a limit to the amount of money that could actually come out of it. You should see what the concerts community has now done to the cryptocurrency at this point between JP Sears and all, all of the above, but just making a mess of it and just really getting people all in the brain gym about it. Meanwhile, what's happening? First of all, many of the Asian countries, such as Korea, Oriental countries, Korea, China, this is how they f they're going to flip-flop, and they already really made massive moves, but this is how you're going to see it visually and understand it. Flip-flopping the economy. Now, let me let you first understand it like this. 
we switch presidents four to eight years, right? Those kind of terms. China spends, what, 20, 30 years? They have regimes, and they do that because they're like laughing at, well, how could you change your entire compartment in four years <laughs> or eight years when if any real major innovations are going to take place, it's going to take like 20, it's going to take generation or two to do that. So they laugh because they feel like, you know, America starts their process over and over again every time they switch a president. Meanwhile, they've been keeping that same regime. And what the leader of that regime has promised his people is that if they work like they have been working for the last, I would say, 10, 15, no, no, not 10, 15, wow, time flies, 20, 30 years strong, that generation, if you work, we will give you the future that of your dreams. This is the promise, okay? And the only way that could actually occur is if all of a sudden the, 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 uh, the currency, the people, et cetera, become more wealthy all of a sudden, right? So what you're looking at also in cryptocurrency and why there's, you know, all this money moving in and out, moving out, and is growing is because it's most robust actually in the Chinese market. The Americans are kind of like, you know, some of the later people to learn, despite what you think, and that's what ego is. I'm going to show you today why this is the truth. But ego is like, oh, we're always on top of everything. And you don't realize that people like Roger Ver, people like uh, Peter Thiel, as I'm going to show you, have already met and went and made world deals. Elon Musk, they make deals across the entire world. They're not just saying, hey, we represent America and, then, and, and we only do deals with America, like what Trump, who's basically Biff from uh, uh, Back to the Future, is got everybody else thinking in this weird augmented reality that people are in with him as their president, mainly the people who voted for him and still feel like they have obligated now to whatever happened and they feel like it's a lodestone around their neck. People do psychological damage to themselves, but check this out. So where cryptocurrency is right now is in, still in the innovators. 2.5% of the people in the world, it's probably more like 1.5 are using cryptocurrency. It's not just about knowing about cryptocurrency. We know a lot about a lot of different things, but it doesn't mean that we're using it. Okay, so when something comes into use, you get the innovators first that start putting it together, tweaking it, it starts breaking. You know, they go through all the, the heartaches and the problems with it, right? Like, I have, we have a special class coming up about getting money out of crypto, right? Because you got these people, they're like sitting there at the slot machine, like, oh my goodness, it's going to fun. And they didn't even figure out, well, what is your pipeline for that coming out and going into something in the real world? Turn that digital uh, 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 fictitious illusion into something real, okay? Don't forget about that. But having done that research and seeing how that whole thing is set up, right? So again, we have a special class for that. So... We're in the innovators phase and where a lot of people are is they're thinking, especially the early adopters, the early adopters are actually the ones hating the most on the cryptocurrency move because they haven't necessarily made the move yet. They're still trying to be safe with it because they're not innovators. OK, so you got the early adopters spreading the most FUD and what they're saying, they're, they're worried every single day. Every time they see some clickbait that says time to get out of alts or bubble gonna burst soon or whatever. They're the first ones to click on that and then start spreading that through the community, through their energetic field, which is predominantly most uh, uh, um, uh, strongest in, right? So what happens is, is that these early adopters basically are unsure about the future of cryptocurrency still in their head, right? And they either go sour because the more they miss money, the more they start getting smeagle minded again, and then they start talking and hating about it and just hoping it crashes because they didn't get in. Meanwhile, they keep thinking it's too late, it's too late, it's too late, like watching Ripple go from 30 cents or 3 cents or something crazy all the way to $3, and then still at every point when glancing saying it's too late, it's too late. I will tell you there is ways to get your money directly out of the crypto world right onto whatever you need to pay as a bill and whatever money you need to put in your wallet, et cetera. So there is a complete funnel as a way out, just in case you're just like somebody likes to dive in for a minute, hold for a minute, gain the benefit if there is one, and then pull it out real quick and then sit and then think of doing it again, right? So just realize it's a real functioning system, but this is something that you need to understand. It's a little bit deeper than what you see in crypto from generally, let's say an average YouTube channel. Like I'm not, I'm not here to talk to you about 
the price necessarily of Ripple and where it's at on the chart and those kind of things. There's people far more proficient at doing that, like uh, that boy BK, that boss method. Now, I'm here to talk to you about the metaphysical aspects of what's going on and critical thinking and deep thinking so that you can enhance your ability to make decisions and you can stop being one of those persons that people that hesitate on the pool. Like, there are things in the world that if you hesitate on the pool, you die. Like, even sometimes when you notice, like, let's say, for instance, you got to punch in a code and there's a clock on the code. And every time the clock is over with, here's a new code. Sometimes if you have to use that kind of system, which banks and stuff use, when you push it, you, if you see the clock about to go out, this is the two-step authentication, you may wait till the clock renews again because there's a pause, like, I don't want to put in the wrong code. While you got other people that just look at it and punch it right in, and they punch it in fast enough to get it. Now, that's a bad example, but what I'm telling you is you have to be quick on the draw. You have to be a person that instead of going through back into the monkey mind, retreating into your consciousness to figure out what are you going to do, if, you've are, if it's already been proven to you what decision to make and you find yourself still in that undecisive realm, that's what's destroying us. That's what's killing us. Those people that are sitting in situations that they know they should have been out of or been into a long time ago, but they're still somehow not making those decisions, right? How do you jar that person out? Like, that's stuff that I ask in my life. How do I just stop doing that altogether? That stuff I see in other people's life, they even ask me, how do I, how do I get away? Like, how do I end it all, right? And they're just at that point because they have this, what they feel like is, is the, the responsibility, okay? And that's where the responsibility comes into possession, but that's tomorrow's conversation, <laughs> What we're talking about right now is that the innovators are, are pretty much on their way to being out when you start calculating the Chinese and Oriental markets, which we're not paying attention to, meaning that this 2.5% is going to fill up rather fast when you have the people that are making up the higher populations of the world actually becoming aware and spreading it through their networks. And sure enough, India is getting big on cryptocurrency. China is big on cryptocurrency. Korea, South Korea is big on cryptocurrency. And a recent article said that North Korea was big on cryptocurrency and Kim Jong was buying Bitcoins. Okay, so check out how this works. So it's going to reach now early adopters here within the next two months. Markets are pretty much parabolic right now, meaning they're just going straight up. And that means that anybody who's trying to give you investment advice per se if, they, if techniques are different, te if you're learning a technique, that's power, and it applies in different places. But when it comes to investment advice, right now, I can pretty much take an entire wall and, and paste crypto icons on it, blindfold myself, drink 90 shots, and then throw the dart. And then wherever that dart lands, I'm probably going to make some money. <laughs> that's pretty much what you're dealing with in an innovator. Once innovator starts reaching early adopters, in a financial instrument. See, the difference between, this is not an iPhone. This is a financial instrument. It is only exchangeable right away for a currency, right? So because of that, this means also that there are going to be many heroes, if you may, in this. People say, oh, man, because, you know, people really do count how much they really like you or how much they feel about you based on how much money they made off of what you're doing. This is sometimes the case, or most of the time the case, in the marketing world, right? So there's gonna be a lot of that, but what it's gonna be also about is, do you know what the future is of this when we start moving into the early majority phase, okay? Like, what is the future of this gonna be? And I'm gonna show you something. The first thing here is, just to understand, just some recent crypto news is that, that Egypt's Grand Mufti issued a fatwa against cryptocurrency yesterday, okay? So meaning that in Sharia law, which is the law that determines what a Muslim is to do, uh, they can be an updating of the fatwa since, or adding to fatwa since the laws in which Muhammad laid down are basically in stone. So they only can elaborate more on them, and that's what Sharia law is and kind of break down specifics based on what's going on in our time right now. And uh, so this is what just happened recently. And I'm trying to figure out if that only just boosted the crypto world, meaning that you see now, once it, now the religious system is going to step in and say, no, you're not supposed to, right? And that's just the whole part of the whole thing, right? But just some, some news to pay attention to. The next thing here is, is that 
let me show you why cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. So that way, if you're prone to FUD, then meaning, you know, fear and, you know, thinking, hey, this is going to crash. You need to pull all this out now or you still need, do need to know your exit route. But, you know, if you're just worrying about even getting in because you don't know when to get out. Also, there is one more thing that I wanted to explain really briefly about the difference between an investor and a swing trader or a day trader. Like a day trader is actually on them charts every single day trying to figure out where the money is. It's very stressful. Uh, I don't advise it. For a person who works spiritually with themselves, you probably will, you'll degradate yourself. I guarantee the numbers are numbing. The swing trader is more the position if you kind of like, like the action, you like numbers, you can stay on top of things, and you know how to deal with the ups and the downs, and if and you want and you can benefit from that based on what I said. That's the swing trader's world, and um, and obviously that's a lot of what uh, BK talks about deeply is about how to look at those charts to know when to come in and when to come out. That is so imperative that you know that because if you don't. Swing trading is like being on a treadmill that you're progressively getting more and more tired. So if you don't know what you're doing with swing trading or day trading, your whatever you invest it will gradually go like this. Because what you'll be doing is, is you'll be moving out of positions and trying to get into positions where things are going up. You'll be psychologically basically in fear of the red, which is when you should buy, and then only looking for the green, which is when you should never buy something. And then that person gets caught on the treadmill. And we talk about this a lot in our class uh, just to avoid it. Now, if you don't have the time for this, the energy, the wherewithal, it's not a makeup of your being, whatever you want to you know, give the title to, the world that I recommend for you is the world of the investor. And that is where you have a portfolio of coins that we know or tokens we know and utilities we know are going to deliver. You set a certain amount of investment, maybe it's $1,000. You buy those coins, you put them in a cold wallet, you leave it. Let me make sure that we still connect it over here. You leave it, meaning that, and if somebody wants to type in the chat, you know, if you do, if the chat's still live, you know, sometimes this stuff just freezes up. Um, but you leave it. And the reason why you leave it is because when you come back in about three months, It'll be like a treasure egg. You'll find that thing has pressed down and run over. And you wouldn't have dealt with none of the drama that goes on between when you have to swing trade or when you have to day trade, what you actually need to know every single day in order to make the right moves. So let that be clear. Now, here's another thing. I, these conversations are just not about investing in cryptocurrency. What these conversations are also about is realizing that there's applications for cryptocurrency that are already coming into your field right now and you could already be benefiting them from them no matter what you do. And let's give an, I'm gonna give an example here and I, I wish I had my link, but a sister was in the chat just recently, her name was Renee, and she was talking about how she was on Steam, which is a, a, a decentralized platform that awards tokens for content And what she was doing is she was, you know, delivering her knowledge. Like, I'm sure she could, you know, a person who does spoken word literally has thousands of, 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 of notebooks and stuff everywhere where they've wrote, written masterpieces, right? And she's posted her masterpieces, and people are appreciating those masterpieces. And the frequency, the higher her frequency, meaning the more often she can do it, the more attention that it's bringing and the more wealth it's bringing her. Now... Other outlets that try to do that same thing don't seem to function properly for people who write spoken word and conscious content. They generally want stuff that is going to work in the trending sector, okay? So this is what I mean. There's, seven, there's now, I just think I looked today, it was about 7,000, I don't know, 5,000. It's, it's high. 2,000 more cryptocurrencies than I looked at last time. And... The value of those cryptocurrencies is within their utilities in the long run. Like once this starts really getting out of this first part, now by the middle of the year, end of the year, it could even take longer. Depending on how far or how fast the world adapts to this and how long it takes them, how many, how many uh, uh, directions they take to get to it. 
what's going to happen is, is that the use cases, meaning what does it do, are going to become more and more important. And that's going to be then what determines really the value of a coin after a while is how far along and how useful is the utility. So today we're going to be talking about use cases, utility use cases, and I'm going to work to crunch this into 20 minutes. So the other thing that you need to know is, as I was explaining, before I had to go back real quick to explain to you the difference between a day trader versus an investor and, and why I say it that way. Like, cause I, you know, I saw some people trying to misconstrue my words in a chat box uh, with one of my friends that deal with cryptocurrency. And I was, you know, saying, okay, let me already put this fire out. I'm not, a, I'm not against what they're saying as far as swing trading. If you have the time and you have the ability, I have some friends that are doing that and they are doing very well. If you're one of those people that have to like step it back a bit, you got your job, you got your children, you got other things that you need to work on, you could just set it up, put it there, hold it like your savings, and you've never seen a savings grow like that. And when you want to pull something out or do something with it, it's readily available for you. And then what I'm here to tell you today is that it's going to be here, and this guy is the reason why. Now, if you understand, let's say, for instance, the founders of PayPal, right? So who found PayPal? Okay, so who do you see here? You see Elon Musk and you see Peter Thiel, right? And that's the two people that I'm going to be talking to you about right now. And it's because obviously you know Elon, but you don't seem to know too much about Elon, Peter Thiel, right? And you see that flag in the background? And it's because Peter Thiel has been very involved in speaking in Congress and politics and different arenas related to world moves and things that are happening. And his agenda has been ultimately to make the, the financial economy scalable. His argument is that the use of technology has been corrupted, the use of science has been corrupted, and the, the, the financial system is defunct because it cannot scale up. So basically we can't get money to, enough money to millions of people in India. We can't get enough money to millions of people in China. This means that they'll live at a different level of life. Not to mention, not just giving them money, but we need an entirely new system. So this is what his argument is. Now, part of this argument, of course, was completely ignored by the oligarch, ye old Knights Templar, which I don't have to show you. <laughs> and meaning that the old families basically looked at this guy and Mark Andreessen like they were nuts when they started coming up with this idea of when they start coming up with this idea of a digital currency, which later on became your PayPal, right? So and your zero, like, you know, these are aliens. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I had to get him. Nobody ever talks about it. I'm like, shit. If it's a hell of it in the room, I gotta say something. This is like, is this one of them cone heads from the old series? Because having this much intelligence in that head spells conspiracy to me. No, I'm joking. But anyway, so obviously Mark Andreessen was a uh, founder of, of Netscape. So what we're looking at here, reading these are the pioneers of the internet. So this all came about because there was a move to actually make a push for the oligarchical system to basically overthrow it, the change, of, the change of guard. And the people involved in this, which actually include even some of the members of the OTO, basically designed an entire digital financial system to overthrow the old pa Pappas paper system. And part of that was to design the PAPL, which is PayPal. And PayPal, was the first implementation of digital currency which the world thought wasn't gonna work. And now everybody uses PayPal, right? And what that also did was it kind of nudged the old bank system in the ribs because they were like, yo, we missed out. The, PayPal's a bank now. Like some people were even thinking on a, on a business level, how does PayPal come a bank? And they started thinking about, well, how do you get a bank license? This is what I started thinking about like maybe 15 years ago when PayPal started moving so much money through it and then I was like, 
is PayPal, you know, is PayPal a bank? And they were like, yeah, it's a bank. And I was like, how is it a bank? Like, where is it banked at? Who, where is this? How do you do that? So it, that was already in my mind. And obviously it's because they do what the hell they want, that they started getting so much control over the, the, the technological aspect of what we're dealing with, with the dot-com boom, et cetera, that they started developing applications that were disruptive. This means that it doesn't matter what the old system is going to do. They figured out equations that beat force. This is like power versus force. This means that, see, force is when we're going to come in with an army and drop bombs on, your, bombs on you if you <laughs> do anything that even threatens our power. That's force, okay? So that force was the force to be reckoned with in the world for the last, who knows how many hundreds of thousands of years this projection has been going on, Okay? So now that force to question it, you cannot try to create a bigger military to come and question it. So the thinkers, like Peter Thiel's six-year-old six chess uh, uh, prodigy, the thinkers had to put that equation in front of them like in math. How do we defeat someone that is using force without putting ourselves in jeopardy? There's a solution for everything. You just have to know the problem. So in crunching that problem, they came up with disruptionalism, and they started working first with information. So information was first. That was the birth of the Internet and the founders of the Internet, as I'm talking about, okay? So that was, see, because before the Pappas had so much control over information, like those mile-long libraries in the Vatican, the royal societies, all of that information about you know, just everything. It's not just limited to even spiritual knowledge. There's a lot of knowledge and information that was just held by these people. Remember, even to read would get your, your eyes poked out, and most people didn't even know, and even still to this day don't know, how to read the Bible, and, but they keep it around them as some kind of talisman of protection. You see what I mean? So what I'm getting at here is they first disrupted information to take the first chink out of the armor of the dragon, by giving people, what, a lot of information. Like, the internet is a lot of information. I have become wise. In internet has knowledge, but when you put it to application, it becomes wisdom, and I have become wise because of this information system, okay? So that was different than somebody determining how many books they're going to give you, and you know a lot of really deep spiritual books have never been translated into English, so this means if you don't speak those other languages, you could never read that stuff. So the languages or the codes was how information was being governed, right? So the next phase was disruptionalism, bam, disruption of, of information. That was the first blow. That was the first state property, get down or lay down, as I call it. The next thing that happened, now that they were reeling off of that, it's like a blow, bloom, and they're still re we're reeling. It's like, oh, shit, how do we get involved? So you had all these oligarchical companies trying to get a dot-com, and even their stocks were going up because they put a dot-com on their name, just like their stocks are going up now because they're forking into new ICOs and creating new revenue streams, right? So they were gearing up. They were like, oh, shit, we missed it. The repercussions of us missing it is going to be big because these people who started it are not playing games. You can't start stuff like this without being a real chess master in your consciousness, you have to have some kind of entire play and end game in your mind before you can even launch off like what Elon Musk just recently did, right? That's not uh, sleeping at night and then wake up, oh, shit, let me just start a battery plant in Nevada and just completely revolutionize the sales and beat a Ferrari with an electric car. And let Nah, that's muscling. Like, you, you can't take an oil-based system like what Hawaii was dealing with and then all of a sudden restore their entire grid to almost 100% uh, um, 100% uh, sustainable without the people who were selling them the oil looking at you like, yo, you about to get one of these bombs without already having something that's like, but hey, we already, we already are way beyond. You know we're way beyond. And the reason why they went way beyond is because they tapped into artificial intelligence. They tapped into, that's the whole, like I said, the AWOS connection. That's also what... Uh, um, uh, Quinn Michaels is talking about, or Michael Quinn is talking about in relation to Tyler, automated, basically aut automaton systems that can answer questions and push back data as if you're talking to a human being. But then there's graduations of them, okay? So like this company, which is, of course, Palantir, is owned by Peter Thiel, 
And Palantir is, when you talk about Skynet, you can Google Palantir and Skynet, and you will get multiple articles of people saying that this is, this is the real Skynet. This is the real deal. It's here. All of the big data, all of the deep thinking, all of the AI, everything from Facebook, because Peter Thiel was the number one, the, the fir- was the first shareholder of Facebook. Okay? This is for people who don't know this. There's people online who know this. Peter Thiel sells, mo- sells most of the remaining Facebook stack. Okay? It's that. But he was one of the first people, if not, actually, excuse me, he was the first person. He, I think he was only a half a million. He invested in Facebook, okay, to gather more data for the AI. In addition to that, you have, well, let's go on from here. Let's go on from here because I could keep going with this because it's the truth. I mean, it's not like you won't find it every single place because it is there. It is part of public record. So the, what I was going to bring to you here is, again, you see Bitcoin rises as report reveals Peter Thiel invested one day ago. OK, so one day ago, Peter Thiel has now come public with something that he already controls just to now bring in what? That second phase of adopters because he's the innovator in the financial field. These are the guys that are still working on the principles of game theory. So when he says, hey, it's okay, green light. Now, this guy, even Donald Trump, is trying to get in his corner. <laughs> He's still chumping Donald Trump off like, yeah, yeah, but it's, a, it's an ethical thing. This is what some of the articles say, meaning that, man, I ain't going to mess up 20 years of me speaking in Congress and talking about the future forward thing for your ignorance. You know, I'll work, I, I work with you because my systems, they went and installed the systems in the Marine Corps. They went and installed the Palantir systems except for the Army, right? So... What's happening here, because they have their own AI system, as you, you may know. Now, the thing is, is that what you have to pay attention to here is this. Since this guy is the one saying, okay, hey, go ahead and start buying Bitcoin, you have to see this. Okay, and this is what a lot of people in the whole cryptoverse right now still are not aware of because they haven't done any research. They're just looking at charts. Right. And this is not saying anything negative about anybody. It's just saying this is critical thinking. We have to do critical thinking because if we're advising someone on what to do on anything, like I say, I'm not a financial advisor. You're a life advisor, though. If you're telling people what to do and they're taking your advice, you have to take on that responsibility as, hey, that's what I'm doing. So I need to know everything. Now, most people know about Roger Veer. Obviously, he's the one who created Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash because he fork, he was one of the first people to fork Bitcoin. And Bitcoin Cash has been an extreme, uh, uh, has placed the crypto world into extreme disarray anytime that it does anything because when Bitcoin's price begins to fluctuate, which is actually more or less now than ever, but when, in the past, when Bitcoin's f- price began to fluctuate, especially go down, it would affect all of the other cryptocurrencies because Bitcoin is to the cryptocurrency world as dollars are to people who are trying to go in the store in the U.S., meaning it is the currency generally that you can exchange all coins through. So it's important if it's going up or if it's going down. Now, Bitcoin uh, Cash has been the disruptionalism to just that whole process of how high Bitcoin can really get. If what happened in, Jan- or what happened in um, late December, January with Bitcoin Cash never took place, Bitcoin would be sitting at 25 at least $30,000 right now. And a lot of people who invested their mortgage in Bitcoin that are still sitting at the top at 19.5 of the Bitcoin, which it has not reached yet, would have basically created a wave of people selling their homes and all that kind of stuff, which they were, they're not ready for that yet. They don't want that, that kind of fluctuation between their markets to happen. But here's one thing that you should pay attention to that you should be in the know about. Now, Shapeshift is the technology that is sitting behind wallets like Exodus and wallets like Jax. This means the onboarding process, the onboarding process for going into cryptocurrency for most people, especially when it comes to holding their coins, has to happen either through Coinbase or it has to, and then when they finally get them from Coinbase, if they want to feel like they, they're holding their own coins, they want to put them in the wallet. They use a software called Exodus, okay? And this is just like cryptocurrency one-on-one, which I'm actually going to do a webinar that'll be free of, just for everyone that doesn't know anything about it. 
to really um, get on point. But here we go. Let's just take a look at this Exodus wallet, just so you can see it. And this is one of the popular wallets that you basically hold your own cryptocurrency in. It has a really nice interface, and that's why a lot of people use it. And it works, but it's also an exchange inside of the wallet. It doesn't just hold coins. You can also trade coins. And that trading is done by Shapeshift, which is the company that actually handles the exchange that handles the transactions in the background. So if you notice, the number one investors now, also when you start taking a look at these investors, what you can also start getting is somewhat of a date of when the investing started happening into the crypto world. And surprisingly enough, or maybe not so surprising, it happened so much further before even the craze of Bitcoin at a dollar. It makes you understand who's the real creators of this, like who was the real originators of Bitcoin in that whole process. And many, uh, basically you're looking at when you understand, like let's say for instance, the, the strongest funders in these groups and you start following their trail, you'll see that they've invested in everything to create this to be what people are doing with it now, okay? And then the next phase, right? Like even exchanges like Bitfinex, which people think are like, you know, okay, that's, a, that's another, you know, that's a whole other country. Everybody here that is an investor sits at a table, right? <laughs> I'm not talking about an ICO investor, somebody who just spent a couple hundred dollars on a coin acting like, you know, they could command what it's going to do tomorrow. I'm talking about the people who, who put the money in it before it started, even before the pre-sale. All those people have to sit together and they have to make decisions in the best interest of their investments, okay? So that should be enough to demystify for people very briefly why not only will the cryptocurrency actually become the financial exchange system for the world, that it will rapidly, as I explained to you before about the term of cryptocurrency, what it means, vacuuming all of these dead presidents, this old system, the old regime, their faces are on those talismans. Those talismans have magical power. So the more of those can be cryptified, meaning given no value, everything that was they were about is being encrypted. When that happens, then that removes the entire old system. Now, I'm not telling you because I see, you know, there's so many dualistic people. No matter how long we've been talking about the dangers of dualism, they're still doing it. They're stuck. You see what I mean? This is, this is the real night of the living dead. Every single person that you talk to most of the time, they're trying to figure out whether this is good or bad. Is it good or bad? They're computers. That's what computers do. They're always like, is this good or this bad? You need that floating point. That's reason. That's consciousness. That's the truth of what the matter is of who we are. But when you're on this light, dark, rich, poor, black, white, red, blue, green, whatever, when you're on the, I like cat, I like dogs, I like smoke, I like, when you're doing all of that and you let that become you, it becomes like a nasty crust infested cortis that builds up around who you truly are. And you stay trapped in that. That becomes your prison or your prism. To break out of that, you gotta break out of the dualistic thing because when you catch your mind thinking that and not just observing, then it's not only missing things, it's also letting you know a lot about you, that how many times have you been standing in your own way because every time the knowledge is coming across, you're not even listening to the knowledge, you're still just in your mind like zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one. Do I like him? Do I not? Do I like him? Do I like what? Do I agree with what he said? Do I not? Do it? <laughs> you see, that's what meditation helps you with. Go meditate if that's your issue, if you're experiencing that. Meditation helps you clear all that up. You ease your mind and ease your consciousness that, especially before you start dealing with, like I said, major stuff going on in the world. The adept is indeed a doll. So here's another thing. The other thing is, is that Peter Thiel will also be launching a Fox News competitor. OK, so this is the advent into the media. Remember, all this is, is planned already. The advent of artificial intelligence, like I said. I, in the other previous shows, I, I give you the end of it. They're going to end up now explaining to you what you should already know. You have a spirit. Singularity is going to point out within the, the, the energetic signatures, gastric discharge devices, all that kind of technology you show there's an energetic system around the human body and how we think, how we move, how we breathe, etc. affects that system. That's metaphysics. We know that, right? But this is the move for the people who are not in the know, which there's a lot of. 
In fact, because there's so many people who think they know all the time and they're always fighting with each other, most don't know what the hell is going on. I work personally just to stay I just want to assist everybody. Like, I just want to show you what I'm, I'm living in the same world as you. You know, at the end of the day, a massive level of consciousness and all that only creates more responsibility of what you can and what you should be doing. So we're still here together. But I'm also on this mission, been on this mission for seven years to really keep bringing what is going to put you in the proper position. I'm bringing you the time machine so that you know, hey, this is what's gonna happen in the future. Let me position myself properly for this wave so that I can, if I don't wanna be in the way, like look at even that entire board or east, or east coast of the United States, that entire east coast area is constantly, continuously getting battered by the changes that have been made within the weather systems. So. It's just like one of those things that you think about and living in that area, maybe you want to push in a little bit further. But if you're still sitting there and you're like, hey, you know, is the weather going to get crazier this year? Well, you're looking at it. But you also have to realize that that's still not going to be everywhere. You could go to Ecuador, which you're sitting right on the equator, the most balanced place on Earth. Kind of quiet. <laughs> they got some of the best water or if not the best water in the world because they have these huge things that have held water in bowls since the beginning of time way up in the air untouched. So, you know, it's just all about what you enjoy and what you like to do. There's a place for everyone, but don't think that, you know, you're stuck wherever you are and that don't be dumb is what I'm saying. Don't like wait on somebody else to figure this thing out for you. Like rouse yourself. That's the only thing that I'm here for. So 10 more minutes. So just understand, then you're going to see this high advent in the media and push for cryptocurrencies in the crypto world. And that brings us into the use cases. Okay. Now use cases are how do people feel about being able to get their money or some products or pay for something with Bitcoin or with cryptocurrencies? How do they feel about that? Because that's generally what controls them. The average person is one check from being ruined. So before they invest anything, they want to make sure that money that they're going to invest, they want to make sure that money that they're going to invest actually is going to come back to them. Okay. So that to them is like, can I go put my money out right away? And so far, other than Wirex, which works in Latin American countries, Bloom's got something coming, Bread's got something coming, um, Coinbase has something that's very expensive and also, you know, you get tracked everywhere you go with it. So as far as use cases right now, we're just seeing a massive rollout of ways that a person can take cryptocurrency right away and then begin to put it right into whatever they want to buy in the store or whatever they want to buy at a, let's say a car dealership, if it's that much money or that much cryptos, or you just, you, this is called use cases. Like, can I go get my money? Can I turn this back into a dollar? And so the use cases is what is ch going to change the world of crypto. So right now, even all of those highs that you're seeing now, those are not even highs. Can you believe it? Like those are not like all that money you see going through there. That's still not as much money as actually in the world or nowhere near it. But I'm just saying that that's not highs until you get real use cases in place. And so this is why I was like three days ago, I was like, are you looking at some stuff on ethos, right? And their use case. And basically they're like the crypto for the people as far as having a car, blah, 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 blah. And then they're so close to being launched because they're as far as getting an actual card out in the market, because the owner is like a mini Vitalik young kid with smart mind, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, this is definitely a sure bet. So with ethos, within just that decision, two days later, double, 100%, right away. Because the market and the market cap, and this is what we teach about, like the market cap, the circulating supplies, like it shows you what is the potential, the growth of the coin based on the field that it's actually in. So if the, the coin is actually in a field that is a trillion dollar industry, and there's only two cryptos right now that are even tackling that field and finding applications for that field, then it calculates, literally, you could do the math. And this brings us to the next thing. So remember, crypto success in a nutshell for a person that doesn't know how to day trade or swing trade is just to buy the coin and hold it. Okay, I just want to make sure that that's very clear for everybody. And, and that's what I have here. No failures in a bull run market. It's a, it, 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 there's no failures really in a bull run market. If you choose the top 15 coins and put $1,000 there, 
it doesn't matter. And if you come back in, a, in three months, not only will crypto still be there, that wallet will be at a higher percentage, okay? But if you jump into day trading and you don't know what you're doing, you will lose your money gradually because you won't be able to hold. And that's why the number one thing in crypto is obviously what? Hold the cryptos, okay? So I just wanted to make sure that gets across. But here's another thing about critical thinking that I don't think that it is really being looked at by a lot of just the regular person. Like I know that big companies have already made this move. Uh, big, big companies have already made this move. And what is this move? This is cryptos and artificial intelligence. Right now, the use cases for artificial intelligence and actually block, blockchain technology, which actually deals with mathematical equations, meaning that for people who are mining those supercomputers that they have sitting at their house that they're mining with, the overall use of something like that can be to actually calculate what's going to happen next. If you could code properly, you could use the power of your miner to literally, you could create an interface in a software that literally tells you, using the computational power of the miner, what cryptocurrency has the highest probability of going up to whatever percent. It, because it's all numbers at the end of the day. And even, it could do so much better with a market like crypto than it can with the stock market because the stock market, it's controlled in many ways versus crypto. There's so many coins that are decentralized and are real people in there that are not really controlled. Plugging all of those into any kind of system that has a, a, a strong mathematical or computational power, let alone an AI ability, gets you a, a basically a thing that can predict money. This coin right here, this coin right here, and even do the investments for you. So there are some applications, and this is how, you know, again, there's the lower rung of people that are just now getting involved trying to figure out what to do. And then there's the, the mid-level, and then there's the high. Like a high-level bot will basically cost you about 200000 These are custom-made bots that are programmed specifically for what you need to be done, right? We got a little fly over here. Fly is like the craziest animal. It's like it just knows when it disrupts you. So now, so those are like high-level bots, right? And then right below that, you got bots like Gunthy, which basically run about two to 3,000. This is GunBot. And these are bots that they have a huge level of scripting systems, meaning that if you know someone that knows how to write scripts, then it could use this kind of bot to do similar to what I'm saying right now about understanding when to trade and when not to trade but it's still not nothing like an AI. A bot is not an AI. A AI is progressively learning based on information that's bought to it and to the mistakes, and it's mistakes, or what it's deemed as mistakes. Bots just do what you tell them to do, even dumbly. If it's a bad idea to do it, they will still execute it anyway, okay? So there's a huge difference. So obviously, with guys, especially like Peter Thiel, already having a strong clutch on the strongest AI systems and even the financial system in its clutches itself, you have to realize that, yes, we will potentially be dealing with an entire change in the system and what that would look like for most people. How do people respond to change? That's how you can actually gather what would be occurring. It's already happening right now. It's trying to be done in a nice way by just giving people a lot of money. The goal is, is just to completely scale up Earth, meaning to actually make it bustle, okay? Now, where do I believe that as a person of higher consciousness, harmony, balance, where you should be? Probably on your, your spot. Let's say um, Costa Rica's East Coast is actually super quiet. Nobody even goes there. Or there's lots of places in the world. And you build your, your, your sustainable system and, you know, just live your life and have fun and, and enjoy yourself, enjoy your children, enjoy everything. That, that's where you should be by that point. This is going to take a minute to completely come to fruition. And what it's going to look like, we don't actually know. You know, it could look like one of those space age future movies. It could go ultra utopian where now humanity decides to take care of itself. And it, it could go in either direction. My thing is I'm not trying to sit back and, and, and wait and let that determine what I'm going to be doing. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making smart investments. I'm going to be doing critical thinking, lots of it. 
I'm going to be doing the best that I can for everybody because when you build value within anything that you do, there's always abundance around you. I'm going to keep staying on this path of staying harmonic and just observing so I can get all the knowledge and information so I won't be racial or you know, uh, 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 distorted in my judgment about anything or my, my, my perception about anything. And what that's going to do is it's going to consistently lead me to the truth, and it's not going to allow me to be pulled from right to left just because somebody else is on the emotional roller coaster trolling or somebody else is, is, is saying something bad about something they don't know anything about. So in conclusion, let me make sure, um, oh, you understand a couple other things. There's still less than 1,000 people in the world that can actually proficiently code on the blockchain. This means that there's still 1,000 people in the world, unless they're using an out-of-box solution, that can actually code an ICO. So this lets you know exactly also where the industry is somewhat bottlenecking because the technological industry is getting geared up for dealing with this code. And it's not that difficult from what they've already been messing with. It's just not something that they've actually saw that there's some industry or some money in. So you're going to basically see a lot of different kind of variations of applications in this crypto space here in a moment because the technological side of the what needs to what they need to have to create applications is going to be bustling and that's again why you're going to keep seeing this parabolic growth and why many people put in their white paper milestones because they understand how long it would take for the technological advancements to take place for a person to be able to do what they need to do with this kind of technology Plan on guys like Peter, uh, 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 Roger Ver, Bitcoin Cash, consistently still being the Joker card inside of the cryptocurrency world because that is still Coinbase. That is still that entire group, Augur, Rep, the uh, group of Numeri. That is still that entire group that already has control of the artificial intelligence blockchain systems to manage a scaled up world economy. Now, again, whether you want to do that or not, it, this is not that conversation. Like if you're sitting on the phone today and you're all hurt about even I'm um, having this conversation, get yourself together. The truth is, is that this is not something that is going to stop because you want it. It's not something that began because you said it should. It, it, it's a whole nother thing about, once again, the reality that we're living in and how decisions and moves are made. Oftentimes with us out, without us being able to say whether we want it to be made or not, because we're living in sometimes a dim consciousness with no say so. Get out of that dim consciousness with no say so. Sovereignty is that. You have all the say. Now none of your power is, 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 is given to anything. All your power is yours. You are the bank and you decide what to do with it. That's it. So that's it for today. Hopefully you get the picture about what I'm saying in relation to doing critical thinking. You also have access to Crunchbase. You can dump, jump on crunch, Crunchbase. You can follow the trail. In our portfolio, what we cover is we cover the companies in crypt, the crypto space that will not be going anywhere because they actually were put there by the founders of the space. So they're not going to be shutting their own stuff down. You see other sites like Basecoin, okay? Like this is an actual website, and this lets you know where things are going to be going. You see a site like Basecoin. Let me see. Uh, let me just put this in like this. Yep. Basecoin has so much money behind it, it's insane. Meaning in its private rounds of investment, nothing to do with ICO. It has so many millions and millions of dollars pumped into it. And it's sitting all behind this cheesy ass website. <laughs> Even with some founding team that just, you know, you, it, it, it's, it's a cloak. This is the idea of a cloak, a cloaking system. When you go to Crunchbase and you look up Basecoin and you see how much money is in it, and then you come over here and you're like, what is even over here? And it's not even nothing going on. But then when you understand what this is, this is the world's first decentralized. Well, it, actually, look, it says even something now. It says it's an algorithmic central bank. Actually, what is really under here is the world's first decentralized Internet. OK, and this is backed by Andreessen Horowitz. OK, that's uh, Bain Capital Ventures. 
right? Pantera Capital, the usual suspects. <laughs> you see? So follow the, what do they say? Follow the money. This is, this is where they're going next. Their projects are already slated in the future. They're not playing checkers with you guys, right? It's not one move at a time. It's five or six, seven, eight, thousands of moves ahead with AI. That's the whole use of AI is to simply predict. Okay, I didn't think I had my screen up there. Okay, see, that's, that's base coin, right? So just remember, the whole thing with AI is just to predict the future, to know what's going to happen next by probability. Now these systems are actually in the hands of the people that are manipulating the financial system as uh, they please. It's disruptional at this point. So the bankers, they've, they're going away rapidly. Money is becoming extinct. You're looking at the beginning of the day that the dollar dies. And don't think that they're just going to snatch the rug off from underneath everything and there's going to be no more money anymore and everything's going to go into FEMA camps. That's not the plan. They want more interaction so that way they can keep feeding these interactions into this deep thinking system to predict what's going to happen in the future and to change what's going to happen in the future. That's their interest. And this is why, again, this is the last thing I, I want to say here, just so you know how serious it is. And that's good. I'm right at an hour. That was cool for an hour. Look, remember this? I shared this a long time ago, or not so long ago, but maybe about six months ago on my, on my Facebook page about Elon Musk and Neuralink. And when this whole thing started being put together about artificial intelligence and the blockchain and all of these different things that everybody was talking about, all I kept thinking about was, well, wait a minute. If, if the dots have already been connected between PayPal and Elon Musk and Peter Thiel and the blockchain and artificial intelligence, what everyone is missing is, is that, but it was Elon Musk. It was Elon Musk that said the reason why he was developing Neuralink, an augmented system that basically loads up into the, that, that nests itself around the brain and allows you to augment, which means pull data from somewhere else in order to react in a situation. But a complete Neuralink system, so there's no lag within the synopsis. What does this mean? This means that tank, load us up. <laughs> If, you, if I'm sitting here and I need to operate this machine over here and I don't know how to operate it, Neuralink is supposed to be the design that is developed that actually allows the, uh, the, the augmenter, the person who's us utilizing the device, to load themselves up with how to work that device and start working that device, okay? Now, the reason why Elon developed this, and there's many interviews about this, the reason why he developed this was because he said that based on the growth of technology, that in the future, the biggest threat to humanity was artificial intelligence. So the main thing that just was like, you know, just kind of like blew me was, but I was like, but you created the artificial intelligence. <laughs> you created the artificial intelligence. The friend, your, your closest friend, especially as far as money partners, Peter Thiel, is the owner of one of the, the largest uh, artificial intelligence structures in the entire world. And you're telling us that the use of Neuralink is to stop something like that? No. The use for Neuralink is to be able to have a human connect themselves to something like that. You get it? That's what the whole design was. He pulls all the data, collects all of the information, and then whoever is chosen to do it, because this is also not a regular person that can put on a fully augmented Inter, neuro, neurologically interweaved system. You would basically see this person go into nosebleeds and convulsions and melt down if they were trying to utilize that system and didn't have the also proper mental structure to deal with the amount of data loading through the system, right? So this is some, this is the shit as far as sci-fi is concerned. This is the end of their 13th floor fantastical projection of being able to load infinite information. And then again, why you have, I'm so tired of seeing people like, oh, oh my goodness, this is a death on all plot. I mean, what is wrong with people? Get, pull yourself together. You breathe the same air. <laughs> like there's nothing different about any of these beings. Like even if they're aliens, you're an alien too. So the reality and the truth here is, okay, so what are you going to do about you? And if your cornerstone, your piece that starts everything for you is resources, 
Well, you're looking at the highest resource system developed in the history of mankind. And I still get, though, that if a person has not spiritually developed themselves for a large influx of current, then it ain't going to end well. So that is the disclaimer, meaning that if you're still don't have yourself together and you think that you're just going to get a large amount of something and everything's going to get better for you, that's not what's going to happen. You have to get yourself together first. But if you've been working on yourself, you've really been ex- working to expand yourself and you feel like there's this curse that's on you with making money, you know who I'm talking to. If that's happening, then this is how you break those spells. This is how you break those curses. You see, the biggest curse that people suffer from is the idea that they must be impoverished. That is the biggest play, that you must be the servant. You must be the slave. It's in your religious system. You must bow down. You must prostrate. It's in all of the systems. And that's what you have to unload. And when you unload that, remember, all I'm talking about in all these conversations I'm not giving any of this stuff more credibility than the spiritual being and who you truly are. What I'm talking about here is getting yourself together and realizing that this, this is what I put in my consciousness that has me barreling ahead at an unstoppable pace. This is not about money, Seven. This is what I, this is what happened to me because I was like, hey man, you know, if I didn't, I don't even feel like coming to it at that level. It's just like, it's ridiculous right now that there's still no resources to, to jump off what we need to do next because, you know, it's still like you're, you're waiting on people to give something. We got to keep developing more systems, doing more university. It's like, man, it's still like a treadmill. When are we going to get to that next level to do the big plans, the big humanitarian efforts? We say, well, shoot, when you, when you get to it, man, that's how it's always been, right? I say, yeah, true indeed. But, you know, that's going to, that's going to, you know, that's the whole money thing. And it's like, yeah, but that's the big three. And that's what we talked about in marketing, you know, the sex, health, and and wealth, right? So sex, health, wealth, that's the big three. If you can't turn whatever it is you're doing into at least an onboarding from those portals, which is pretty easy with consciousness and health, right? But if you actually can tap into all three of those or even two of those, then it brings a huge boost to whatever you're doing, right? And it's possible. I mean, consciousness does involve working with yourself in the system, your, your tantra and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's possible. But the thing is, is that that whole money thing, though, that whole wealth thing, now that's where you lose the conscious community because they're forever broke. They're at imagining that they're supposed to stay in this decrepit, poor system, okay? And so I decided to change that. That's why we created Open Source Wealth. And no, no further than when I uttered it out of my mouth, all of a sudden I got a transmission about cryptocurrency. And I'm literally watching right now Many of my friends, including myself, looking at just the continuous increase in digital numbers. So the only aspect next that comes is, okay, well, let's roll that right out and roll it into employing people. Let's roll that into building stuff. Let's roll that into this guy getting paid on the job site. Let's roll that into materials. Let's go ahead and get it going then. Because that main thing that I said to myself, Seven, this is not about money. This is about sovereignty. And because you're living in that physical world, and you've already waxed strong in the spiritual aspects of things. You cannot be asking anybody for anything. You cannot be having these people turning on your lights. You cannot be doing anything because that misrepresents who you are. Get sovereign. Adept time. Big boy time. Big woman time. Get sovereign. That's it. Stop playing around with these cuckoo brains and these knuckleheads that keep running one way and running the other. Stop trying to please all of these different people who are nuts in their own mind. Did you know one out of 10 people are psychologically impaired? Now look at your Facebook friends. If you have 5,000 of them, how many is that? 50, (laughs) right? So 500, I mean, how many is it? You see, So, so when you get that one person, keep trolling your stuff and keep, the question is, hey, why do you keep getting all bent out of shape every time it happens? So this is financial management to me. It's energetic management. It's putting yourself in power and actually being the sovereign in your own world. It's making yourself the bank so you become responsible for securing your own future. That's what we're talking about. What's messing with that? So I'll talk to everyone soon. We'll be back together. I got one about relationships, possession, you know, what really belongs to you, you know, life after this, how it's going to go, the grand party, the great vacation, all that coming up next. And so definitely check me out. And, uh,
I did leave a link in the chat. If you want to get more intrinsic with this, you're trying to look for that portfolio. You need to know where to go with the cryptos. You're not trying to blindfold yourself, throw a dart at the wall. You need to get some trading skills as far as learning how to do the charts and those kind of things. You need information. We got information for you. Just email us and we got you. So wholeness and balance vibrations. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next generation of science. Is there any way in which one's mind can be?